the top of the Beekman Towers Hotel can't be beat as a spot for meeting a beautiful girl, even one with the kind of troubles requiring the services of a guy in my business. Unfortunately, Sylvia Dutton qualified on only two counts. She was a girl, and she was in trouble. Anybody who would have called her beautiful would have been stretching a point. And to be technical about it, Sylvia wasn't in trouble either. If anyone had a problem, it was her mother. From what Sylvia told me, Mrs. Thelma Dutton was obviously being set up as the mark in a con game so old that I thought it had gone out of style along with Mahjong, the Model T, and two chickens in every pot. Well, poor mother has always been rather naive and trusting, but Bruce Boyd has completely turned her head. And he's years younger than mother. Why, well, he can't be more than 27 or 28. Hmm. What about this other one? I mean, the man that your mother met on the sightseeing tour. Joseph McClure. Well, he says he's a rancher from Arizona. Well, he's a much older man. I'd say he was about your age. Mr. Hammer, you must help me. Only Mother mustn't know that I've talked to you. That's why I asked you to meet me here. All right, honey, she won't know anything. Unless and until I turn up something she should know. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. Now, we're gonna get in touch with you. Um, at the Marlboro on Sutton Place. Mother's kept an apartment there this winter while I've been going to school. Oh, well, then you don't live in New York permanently. Oh, no. Mother's traveled a good deal since Dad died and I went away to school. But our home is in Kanajahari Junction. I, I beg your pardon? Kanajahari Junction. Where's that? About five miles east of Lake Winnipeka. Oh! Come on, honey, I'd better get you back to school. The names of Bruce Boyd and Joseph McClure hadn't rung any bells. But that wasn't surprising. If there's one species of crook who changes his name as often as he does his socks, it's a con man. All right, what's your interest in these two guys? Well, it seems that they're trying to gaff a little old lady from Canajahari Junction. Well, County Jerry Junction's about five miles from Lake Winnipeka. I know. Huh? Well, what's the dodge? What's your sure thing on the phone is? You see, um, the old lady's daughter, a college kid named Sylvia Dutton, called me in on it. Seems that Mama Dutton met this McClure character on a sightseeing tour. Well, they had a few dates, and then one day took her to the racetrack. And that's where they met Boyd. Accidentally, of course. Oh, sure, sure, of course, of course. Well, uh, Boyd gave it to the old lady right between the eyes with the uh, good looks and the boyish charm. And she flipped. Well, they started going out together, and then one day, he let her in on his big secret. That he was like uh, ham and eggs with Big Jim Raffick. Raffick? The bookie boss? Yeah, the same. So then Boyd, uh, Boyd tells Mama Dutton, and uh, McClure, too, of course, that just because he liked him so much, he was gonna let him make a lot of money betting on only the sure things that a guy like himself with a direct pipeline to a big Jim Raffi. So the Dutton woman and McClure give Boyd some money to bet for them. They win, they get set up for the big one. Sing it, Daddy, you know the lyrics. How much did Boyd say he wanted? 25,000. Rough. From each. No. So if you can make a rundown on Boyd and McClure, I'd sure appreciate it. Well, if we got any priors on them, it shouldn't take long. Yeah. Livingston Manor. Well, uh, all right, I'll call you later. Mike, hmm? your schoolgirl client is wrong about one thing. What's that? Conajahari Junction. It's only three and a half miles east of Lake Winnipeka. Big Jim Raffick. Oh, baby, I ain't even met the guy. What, you run bets for him? Well, 
Ah, does that make him and me kissing cousins? Hey, I can mention a hundred guys who are closer to the racket than I am. Yeah, and at least one of them will know how to get in touch with him. No, all you gotta do is get on that phone, stay on it until you find out which one it is. Hammer, hammer, I have a heart. Oh, now, Jeter, Jeter. Look here, now. <laughs> You're gonna get me in touch with somebody who can get me in touch with Big Jim Raffick, or am I gonna have to cut your heart out? Now, you don't want that, do you? No. Huh? Okay. 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 Now, listen, I know a guy that knows a guy who may have a line with Raffick, you understand? But I can't get in touch with this guy that I know until around, until around 6, 6.30. Uh -huh. You said I can call him, okay? Huh? Okay? Okay. So all the time. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. Yeah, right. sure. <laughs> <laughs> On my way back uptown, I'm still on Pat Chambers again. He hadn't been able to turn up anything on Joseph McClure, but Bruce Boyd was another story. Five years before, Boyd had gotten off with a suspended sentence and a conviction for grand theft bunco. I decided the information was enough reason for me to have a talk with Sylvia Dutton's mother. A boy's conviction on a bunco charge wouldn't convince the old lady that he didn't love her for herself alone. Nothing would. Mr. Hammer. Well, hello, honey. Is your mother home? Well, yes, but... But what? Well, she's angry. I told her that... Well, we had a quarrel about Bruce, and I told her that I'd hired you to find out about him. Oh, well, fine. I found out something now. I'd like to talk to her. Would you get her, please? Please? Mother, would you come out here, please? Mother. I'd like you to meet Mr. Mike Hammer. I'm always pleased to meet a friend of Sylvia's. Mother, Mr. Hammer isn't a friend, exactly. Won't you come in? I've been expecting you, Mr. Hammer. Well, I must say, I haven't been expecting you, Mrs. Dutton. Uh, I'd like to talk to Mr. Hammer alone, Sylvia. I'm sorry, I, uh, I didn't mean to stare, but... Uh, but you were expecting me to be a little more along the lines of Whistler's mother. Well, yeah. Thank you. Now, what's all this nonsense about Bruce? Well, I'm afraid it isn't nonsense, Mrs. Dutton. Here, you, you'd better read this. I've been an awful fool, haven't I? I'm sorry. I, I know how you must feel. Sylvia told me how fond you are of this Bruce Ben. You don't have to sympathize, Mr. Hammer. You know, I'm, I'm glad that Sylvia went to you about Bruce. For her sake. For her sake? She didn't go to you because I was being a fool about Bruce. But because she'd already been one. Are you saying that she's in love with this Bruce Boyd? Yes. And jealous of me. Oh, what a mix-up. Going to you was her childish way of retaliating for Bruce's indifference toward her. Maybe now she's worked it out of her system. As for the $25,000 I gave Bruce, I'd like to handle that my own way. Well, which way is that? To avoid any newspaper publicity, if possible. Actually, Bruce Boyd hasn't committed anything unlawful yet, has he? Well, technically speaking, no, I suppose he hasn't. Got a dinner date with him tonight. Demand my money back. If he gives it to me, I'd like to forget the whole matter. And if he doesn't? Then, well, then you can handle it in any way you see fit. Fair enough, fair enough. I'll wait in my office tonight for a call from you with word from Boyd. You see, if Boyd says no, I want to be in a position to uh, move in before he moves out. I'll call you around midnight. Uh, what's your number? Uh, Sylvia has it. Oh, now I'm jealous of Sylvia. <clears throat> Bye. Bye. I went back to the
the office and called my answering service for messages. There were several. I was interested in only one of them, the one from Jeter telling me that Big Jim Raffick would meet me at the candy store at 8 o'clock. So where's Raffi? Look, I got your message. You told me to come down here. I'm here now. Where's Raffi? What's the summer for? Good evening, Mr. Hammer. What is this, Raffi? Fan him. Whistle your dogs off. Relax, Mr. Hammer. Fan him. Very light ticklish. What's going to happen, Hammer? Honest, I got to Shut up. You could have saved yourself a hard time, Hammer, if you'd let my boys frisk you. You see, I've been dodging a subpoena from the grand jury, and uh, I had to be sure that somebody didn't get cute and hire you to serve it on me. Are you satisfied? Temporarily. What's on your mind, Hammer? I'm looking for a guy named Bruce Boyd. Yeah, you, you know him. Why are you interested in Boyd? He's hustling a client of mine for 25,000 bucks with a line about surefire bets on the ponies. He was using your name as a come on for the suckers. Why that? Now, wait a minute. You don't think I'm tied in with Boyd, do you? No, not anymore. But you did, and that's why you wanted to see me, huh? Yeah. Where can I find Boyd? What if I don't tell you? Yeah, all right, all right. I can take a hint. He's at the Croydon Hotel on West 54th Street. I'll be seeing you, Hammer. You better not be alone when you do. Smokes. What? No, forget it. <clears throat> Mike, I want to see you at the Hotel Croydon right away. Croydon Hotel? Wait a minute, isn't, it, isn't that where Bruce Boyd's living? Lived, Mike. Lived. Past tense. I set a new track record getting to the Croydon. Pat Chambers brought me up to date in three short sentences. Boyd had been blasted three times with a 38 caliber revolver. The time of death had been established at around midnight. His body had been discovered when a maid entered the room to clean. And then it was my turn. I started by correcting Pat's misconception of Mother Dutton of Canajahari Junction and ended with my rendezvous with Big Jim Raffick and his two sluggers at Jeter Sharp's candy store. You don't think Raffick would have killed Boyd? No, no, no. Raffick might have had his stormtroopers rub Boyd up a little. But he's been around long enough to know that you can't collect from a corpse. Besides, Boyd had money. He would have paid off long before he'd let anything fatal happen. If Boyd had dough, where is it? You mean you haven't found it? $10.73 in his pockets. Hinkle, call the office. Have a pickup order put on Jim Raffick. Yeah, 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 Raffick. But what about Boyd's partner, Joe McClure? That's a good question. Well, how good? He checked out of the plaza this morning. Got a bolting out on him, too. Come here, Mike. Recognize this bracelet? Hello? Yes, Joe. What? Oh, how come? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay, I'll be there in a few minutes. So what was that all about? McClure? You found him. He found us. What are you talking about? 
He's in my office. Told Joe Hayes he was on his way out of town for the weekend when he heard news broadcast about Boyd's murder and turned right around and came back because he's worried. Ab about what? About the $25,000 he says he gave Boyd to bet on the horses for him. So, when Captain Pat Chambers starts questioning you, he'll be wearing his spurs. Now, if you're lying to him, you won't. Now, let's stop playing games. Now, you were wearing this bracelet when you had lunch with me yesterday at the Beekman House. That's enough, Mr. Henry. She's telling the truth. I, I can prove it. This is Sylvia's bracelet. I had them made in Mexico last year. One for Sylvia, one for myself. Can you prove this is Sylvia's bracelet? Can you prove it isn't? You realize, of course, what you're saying. I'm saying I killed Bruce. Well, go on, don't stop now. Bruce didn't keep his dinner date with me, so I went to see him. He refused to give my money back to me, so well, he, he was packing to leave town. His revolver was lying on some clothes on top of an open suitcase. I, I picked it up. He grabbed me. That's when the bracelet fell off, I suppose. I don't know. Go on. We struggled. And somehow the gun went off. And he... He staggered back. I, I shot him two more times without knowing what I was doing. And then? I ran. What about the gun? I, I, I took it with me. When I got up this morning, I uh, walked down to the river and threw it into the water. What did you do with the money? I don't know anything about the money. The money was not in Boyd's apartment. I can't help that. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Come on, Mrs. Dutton. We better get your coat. Come on. Come on. Where are you taking me? Down to Captain Pat Chambers. Come on, honey, get your coat. Sylvia. Sylvia! Something's happened to her. Sylvia! Is there any other door into that room? No. Get out of the way. Thank you for trying to protect me, Mother, but it's no use. I don't know why I killed Bruce any more than I know why I loved him in spite of what he was. Sylvia. What's that? Here, read it for yourself. Come on. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. An ambulance rushed Sylvia to Bellevue Hospital. I took Thelma to Pat Chambers' office. Heard anything from the hospital? Yeah. She's still unconscious, but she's out of danger. Captain Chambers will be here in a few minutes. Does he know about that note? No. No, not yet. Mike, Mike, please destroy it. She only wrote it to protect me. <laughs> you know, she says that you're trying to protect her, and you say that she's trying to protect you. Well, I'm telling you the truth. Well, if you are, it's the first time. What do you mean? I mean that you suckered all of us. Sylvia, me, Joe McClure. What do you know about McClure? Well, I know that he's just what he says he is, a rancher from Arizona. He's probably so dumb he shouldn't be left off the reservation, but that's beside the point. The real point is that you and Boyd were partners, right? All right. See, I first suspected it when Chambers told me that McClure was down here in his office worrying about the $25,000 that he had given to Boyd. True. McClure was the real mark. Yeah, but, uh, but Sylvia had it all backwards, huh? Yeah. All these years, she thought we were living off the money her father gave me when he died. Everything was going just fine. Until Bruce persuaded me to try scoring here in New York. 
Sylvia met Bruce. How she could have ever fallen in love with him, I don't know. But I do know she didn't kill him. That's right, honey, that's right. You did. Yes, how many times do I have to tell you? I went to him, I told him about you. I said the only way we could get out of trouble is to let McClure off the hook and give him his money back. Yeah, but boy wouldn't agree with you. No, he was packing to leave town. We argued, he slapped me. I picked up the revolver and, well, I've told you the rest. Yeah, yeah, except what you did with McClure's money. All right. I lied about that, too. Where is the money now? In a safe deposit box in the Seaboard National Bank. I put it there as soon as the bank opened this morning. This morning? Yes. Aren't you forgetting something? What? Today's Saturday. So if the money was in the bank, it was in the bank before last night. And if it was there before last night, you didn't have to argue with Boyd about it. You already had it, and you could have returned it to McClure on your own. I never knew anybody to fight so hard to confess to something that they didn't do. Why, please let me do this my way. I'm sorry. But everything's my fault. If it hadn't been for me, Sylvia would never have met Bruce. Why, she's just a child. She didn't know what she was doing. I know, I know. The jury will take that into consideration. What difference does it make as long as somebody pays for Bruce's murder? The difference is that Sylvia may go to jail for a few years. But you'd probably get the chair. Oh. Let it go. I don't care. I was never the mother type. I was always too busy for her. I don't know if she ever had any problems. But now she's got a big one. Mike, you've got to let me do this one decent thing. Oh, well, maybe I'd better come back later. No, Pat, no. You come back later. You may not find this. What is it? You might say it's the sins of the mother. Hey, wait a minute, Mike. I may need you. Well, Pat, you don't need me the way I feel right now. I don't even need myself. see me. Oh, man, you're receiving wrong. I ain't never send you no message. I sent it, Rafi. Hannah! What is this? Um, uh, Tag. That subpoena you've been dodging? I hired out to serve it. Thanks, Hammer. Thanks a lot. I just had the joint fixed up. Relax, Gina, relax. Oh, man, sure. 